Hi everyone, I'm Dave, one half of Pillbug Interactive, and uh, today I'm going to be doing my very first solo devlog, where I talk about what I do here at Pillbug, which is slightly different to what Sean does. I think we make a pretty good team, um, but we definitely bring different things uh, to Pillbug when it comes to designing and developing our games. So to do that, I, I wanted to talk a little bit first about how I actually joined um, Pillbug, and then we'll get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty storytelling stuff um, for Cycle 28, which is basically what I do um, for a living uh, outside of Pillbug, um, but also inside um, Pillbug Interactive. Um, so to start with, um, I met Sean at um, a kind of an event for our day jobs, um, our, what we do most of the time, which is we're both university lecturers. Uh, Sean is at Swansea, I'm at uh, the University of South Wales. So we're geographically pretty close to each other. Um, and we met at an event and um, it quickly became apparent that Sean um, was a really nice guy into some really cool things and was, um, you know, starting up Pillbug really. Um, and uh, over the course of this event, we got chatting and um, kind of found a mutual interest in games, uh, both computer games and board games, um, and you know, TV shows, movies, music, those kinds of things. Uh, we just seemed to get on really well. Um, and then later, uh, over the course of this event, um, Sean said to me, "You know, I've got uh, this next project for Pillbug, um, and uh, I, I think you might be able to help with it." And that sounded obviously, you know, super exciting. Someone coming to you and saying, I've got this computer game, you know, could you do anything with it? And I was like, yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about it. So Sean, um, and I think we both remember this quite fondly. He said, um, I've got a blue spaceship and it shoots a bunch of yellow spaceships. And I'm not really sure why, uh, why they do that, why it's doing that, you know, why one is shooting the other. Um, and I suppose for some games, you know, that just doesn't matter, you know, so, you know, you're, um, you shoot the enemy, you know, fairly straightforward. Um, but I know Sean, um, in talking to him um, over the course of that event, he felt he wanted something more, that there was something really lacking there. And, um, you know, as tried as he might, he just, he just wasn't coming up with any ideas that he was happy with. Um, and what he was lacking really um, is this is the concept of story, of narrative, of um, why we do things and, and, and the story behind our actions. Um, so he asked me to take a look at it and come up with some ideas and run some ideas past him. I suppose as, you know, I didn't know it at the time, but you now might consider that, um, or I might consider that kind of early concept design. Um, Something we do, of course, you know, as writers, but you get artists and, you know, and it's actually, you know, it's own own thing, really, you know, concept design and development. So he that was how Sean kind of approached me to be part of Pillbug. And we weren't really thinking anything bigger than that at the time. Um, so how um, how that kind of moment came about um, was because I'm a writer in my um, in my non Pillbug life. Um, and it, I teach creative writing, at, uh, as I said, at UN, USW. Um, so I am a published author. I've got, you know, uh, books out. Um, I have a trilogy of books. Um, here they are. Um, they're odd, uh, unique, wonderful, strange things. Um, they are uh, zombie western, I think is what um, people have called them and what my publisher likes to call them and you know if I'm meeting someone for the first time and they ask what I do I sometimes say you know I write strange books zombie westerns um, and uh, you know obviously that's that's genre fiction uh, which blends kind of horror western a little bit of science fiction elements in there as well so I think kind of with that experience behind me, Sean was kind of interested in how I would approach this blue ship, yellow ship kind of uh, situation, you know, what would I bring to that? Um, so obviously uh, the thing that went first through my mind was other than like, wow, that sounds amazing as an opportunity was 
um, you know, this is very different from a computer game. Um, how you tell the story over the course of, you know, 200, 300, 400 pages of, um, you know, the written word is very different to the kind of the visual storytelling um, and the, the interaction that you get with a computer game. Um, I've, I've been a gamer all my life um, for, from, you know, for as long as I can remember, I've been, you know, playing computer games of different kinds. Um, but I, I've never really kind of approached that as my main mode of storytelling. It just wasn't something I thought of because um, I've also read books um, for as long as I can remember and, you know, got a big kick out of them. So, um, so the thing was, I was hugely respectful, as I think anyone should be, of the differences in different storytelling uh, mediums. Um, you know, I wouldn't, just because I have written and published novels, I wouldn't assume that I would be able to write straight off the bat a screenplay or a collection of poetry or um, something for the theatre. So I, in the same vein, I didn't just assume I could write um, a story for computer games. Um, but at the same time, I didn't want to turn down um, Sean's opportunity uh, and he wanted to work with me on this process um, and bring his experience in the industry um, to that as well. So um, I kind of looked at it as, as a, you know, again, something that is uh, a huge opportunity, but something that I wanted to treat with the utmost of respect. Um, so I did what anyone, you know, who's starting to do something for the first time should do is, um, you know, look at some great examples of, of games that really have phenomenal storytelling. So, you know, we are in currently in a really great era of uh, the narrative based game and, you know, kind of understanding um, that people want interactive stories and, and that, that that's a valid gaming experience and it's a valid kind of story um, consuming experience as well. So I did a bunch of research and looked at lots of different games that were really doing it well, um, both at like the indie level um, and some triple A's as well to see kind of what was going on. Because my gaming background um, was uh, kind of heavily based on MMOs. I am a kind of, you know, um, self uh, admitted uh, MMO addict, or at least I was until relatively recently. Um, and they tell stories in a very specific kind of way. Uh, they have huge amounts of lore and kind of world building to do and things like that. In some ways, excuse me, they feel a lot like, um, you know, whole, whole um, novel series, especially in fantasy and science fiction novels and fantasy and science fiction games. So those have felt kind of quite comfortable and, com and you know, spa a comfortable space for me. Um, something like Cycle 28, um, is very different from that. You know, how a small 2D um, compact indie sh kind of shoot 'em up, um, how that tells its story is just hugely different from something like um, World of Warcraft, EverQuest, um, Dark Age of Camelot, those kinds of, those kinds of MMOs or Eve, for instance, as well. Um, so I, I, I wanted to kind of just get a sense of what was going on in games like the walking dead series in games like um 80 days um and and just see how those kind of narrative based games were playing out uh, and it was great it was really exciting and really interesting experience but i always had an eye on the fact that sean had showed me this blue ship fighting the yellow ship so i always kind of thought well how am i gonna kind of get this um, narrative aspect, this story aspect that this guy has come to me to help with, how am I going to get that um, to where it needs to be? So it's a fun gaming experience and people are like, you know, the story's helping um, tell, the, tell the, the story of the game and the world and the characters, but also, you know, really enhancing uh, the player's experience. Um, so I went through a process uh, with Sean um, really early on in the development of Cycle 28, um, which was just trying to kind of build this situation up a little bit, you know, try and understand <clears throat> why the blue ship um, was where the blue ship was, what it was doing, you know, and, and who, who was flying it. I mean, for me as a writer, that was the first, first and most obvious question, which was, you know, who is the pilot? Um, and that really opened um, the floodgates for me, trying to understand um, the character, 
behind um, that ship, that, that 2D sprite. You know, that's what I wanted to know. Um, and it built from there for me. So, um, you know, for some reason, um, I was drawn to this character um, of Olivia Bergen, who is a, you know, middle-aged um, woman who's kind of been in the um, flight academy, the fleet, for, for, for quite a long time. She's an experienced pilot. She knows what she's doing. Um, but she's just in this very difficult situation. She finds herself stranded um, and alone. Hence, there's only one blue ship. Um, so, you know, kind of trying to get to know Olivia and understanding who she is and what she might be doing was the way I approached it as a writer. Um, and I'm sure lots of other computer game writers will take all kinds of different approaches. Um, and I'd love, you know, I'd love to talk to them about that as well. Um, so I started to think about who Olivia was and then Sean and I were doing a lot of sitting down and talking about um, how the game was actually going to be played. Um, I hadn't really, uh, don't tell Sean this, I hadn't really thought that he would want me to do that, in fairness. I thought that was, um, I thought I was just going to write some story, maybe, you know, a couple of short stories and some text for the game. But it quickly be became apparent um, in a really exciting way that he wanted me to um, have an input in how this game was actually going to be played how the story would mesh with a lot of gameplay mechanics. Um, and I said as earlier that I've been a gamer for a very long time. I play board games, I play computer games. So I, I understand kind of uh, how game mechanics work um, on a fairly superficial level. Um, but it wasn't until we started developing Cycle 28 that I saw um, the real opportunities that game mechanics lent the storytelling process um, you know when you're when you're writing a novel um, you know like these which I do a lot of the time and I you know I talk to students about that all the time you know there's a there's a wealth of material and background and all that kind of stuff that goes with novel writing but in a different way to games um, it feels like you're kind of uh, you know you're you're the god of everything you're kind of controlling everything um, and there aren't many constraints on you you know, there's the constraints of the written word, but, um, you know, when you come to a computer game um, project like I did with, with Cycle 28, um, I had to be thinking in a very, very different way. Um, and there were other kind of pushes and pulls on how the story might work out. Um, and, and as constraints go in game design terms, you know, they can be actually really, really helpful. Um, so for me as a storyteller, it was in incre incredibly helpful um, to have something like Sean turn around and say, well, basically I want, you know, the game to run between, you know, five and ten minutes. You know, that's that's what uh, a full playthrough um, a, might, might look like. <clears throat> so, you know, you start thinking, well, how is my how am I going to tell my story if the player is playing for five, ten minutes, you know, and, and getting to the end and kind of, you know, what, what's that going to look like? What kind of story um, model works um, that quickly? Um, how am I going to tell my epic story about this middle-aged pilot um, who's stuck in, in the situation if I have to do it in five, ten minutes when most of the time the player wants to be shooting yellow ships and not, you know, reading a book? So um, that was a lot to take in and was a lot to think about. But what it did mean is that I could kind of get involved with that development process um, that Sean was involved in um, and help guide it through this concept of narrative and concept of story. Um, and I can't remember exactly if it, was, if it was my idea or Sean's idea or we kind of got there together um, was the, the concept of Groundhog Day, right? You know, that great film with, with Bill Murray um, that, uh, you know, is essentially a time loop story um, of which there were many before Groundhog Day in fairness, but um, that time loop story where your main character is kind of just stuck um, living the same day, same hours, you know, whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of waking up into it again and they have that knowledge that that's what's going on and they, they're kind of trying to break out of this time loop. Um, kind of all you need is kills, you know, the film is called Edge of Tomorrow. It's a good kind of slightly more contemporary version of that um uh which which is you know great do check it out um 
so we came up we you know, and we thought well and it just it just as soon as kind of we said you know groundhog day um it just fit you know it was a real natural uh, kind of you know light bulb moment where we just said yeah that that works so well with, with the game mechanics the idea that players going to kind of play it for five ten minutes and and kind of be almost kind of back at the start again um yeah um and they're trying to improve their score they're trying to do this that and the other but it's kind of looping that round again and again and again so yeah, uh, you know, then I was thinking, okay, so now I, I know who this pilot is and they're dealing with the fact that they're having to do the same, um, you know, combat scenario again and again and again. And, uh, you know, okay, so like, you know, kind of parallels with all you need a ki is kill are, are fairly obvious at that point. Um, so, you know, that kind of pushed the story into a certain direction um, this idea then that there would be a mystery, you know, the, the main characters trying to solve how they would get out of this time loop. Um, well, wouldn't it be really cool to make the player have to try and figure that out too? Um, so that was kind of the next stage of, of the Cycle 28 story development was, well, you know, we've got the scenario, we've got this character, we're starting to understand why she's doing what she's doing. Um, but it's also having knock-on impacts on how the game's going to be played, how the gameplay will actually feel for the for the players and what they'll be trying to do, what they'll be trying to achieve. Um, so that was uh, kind of how kind of Sean and I started batting ideas back and forth um, for Cycle 28 and Cycle 28's story and in, in its development. Um, and it kind of grew and grew from there, really. Um, and I don't want to give away too much. Um, you know, we're a couple of days away from uh, launch as I'm recording this. Um, and we've just announced uh, the, the first player to solve and um, explain the main mystery of Cycle 28 and get Olivia out of uh, the time loop she's in, um, gets uh, free pill bug games for life, basically. It's a golden ticket kind of system. So. Um, I don't want to give away. I'm I'm sworn to secrecy on on many of these uh, issues, but uh, that's where it came from. Essentially, that kind of development process. And the last thing I wanted to talk about um, in this devlog, because I'm aware it's probably going on a little bit long, is um, how the story actually works in Cycle Twenty Eight. Because as I said, you know, you pick up a book, you open it on page one, you go to you know most of them anyway you go through in a fairly logical chronological order and it's easy peasy um cycle 28 and a lot of computer games have a very different um thing going on with their storytelling and how the player uh, or consumer interacts with that narrative in cycle 28's case um every time you start a new run um a new cycle you get um a, t a, a block of text it's a small paragraph few few lines appear above the ship um, and that's kind of Olivia's uh, log really you know those kind of classic starts of Star Trek you know with captain's log and um, this is essentially kind of Olivia's um, log and she kind of tells you a little bit of what she's thinking at the moment um, so you can start to see when you know things take a bit of a turn for Olivia because her her logs start to shift and become a bit unusual and she's you know, she's telling you how she feels um, about what's going on. And those, those, those kind of paragraphs, those captain's logs, they cycle through as you restart new cycles. So um, there's a system which I, I, don't, I won't go into, but um, it kind of delivers new captain's logs at various points. Um, so, and that's, that's all contained in the game. That's as soon as you, you, you boot up game, start cycle 28 and you're into the game and um, there's that, that first captain's log and you know, you'll start seeing them the more you play and the more you die and you, you know, the more you play again. Um, but that's not the only way the story works in cycle 28. That's the kind of the, the most obvious, it's the most in your face for, for players. But there are other hidden stories in in the game and again i can't say too much about them um, but what they do is they offer a different opportunity for storytelling um, in the game which is you know which i do bring 
um, a kind of uh, prose or novel writing kind of experience too. That's my kind of approach. Um, and, um, and, you know, and they're discoverable for the players and I'm really excited to see what people make of them and, and, and kind of how they enhance the, the play experience. Um, but there's a certain system to the way they function. So the, the game uh, captain's logs that I was talking about initially, they're kind of what's happening now in, in the story. They're, they're, they're the immediate kind of experience of um, Olivia Bergen, space pilot, um, in this in this scenario where she's surrounded by enemy ships um, and is in a, caught in this time loop, reliving it over and over again. Um, <clears throat> the other story um, kind of concepts and, and, and extracts and elements are um, more about what happened before that. So you get um, a kind of um, a background story um, about uh, how this came to be, how she came to be in this scenario, in this situation, but also who she is and, uh, you know, what her family situation is like um, and, you know, what, what she wants uh, in life and, you know, what, what she's worried about, what are her fears, you know, all those kinds of things that I think are really important for um, writing, writing stories. Um, so those elements are are present in the in-game bits but they're also you know they they draw the the player a little outside the game um for those of you who are interested to kind of explore a little bit more of the world and 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 of, of olivia really as a person so they're there they're not something you necessarily have to engage with um i think both sean and i have um, a design philosophy that we want players to have that maximum choice. You know, we don't want it to force you to do necessarily anything you don't want to do. If you want to play Cycle 28 a certain way, that's great for us. You know, we're totally happy with that. But those of you who do really connect with narrative uh, concepts within games, um, there will be something for you in Cycle 28 that I think you can really sink your teeth into. Um, and I hope you know, you'll, you'll, you'll find some, some interest um, and discovery there as well. And, uh, you know, start kind of commenting and sharing thoughts and exploring um, all the things that are on the story side of the game, as well as, you know, the, the leaderboards. So that's, um, that about wraps it up. That's how the story of Cycle 28 story came to be, I suppose. Um, Love it if you guys were to like and subscribe to the De the Cycle 28 devlogs um, at the Pillbug Interactive YouTube channel um, for, and subscribe for more uh, video content as we make it. It's going to be a lot more devlogs, a lot more um, shoot, shoot dev shootouts and more like this videos. And if people want, I'm more than happy to talk a little bit more about storytelling and um, storytelling in games and storytelling in novels and all kinds of things, really. So plenty of content, um, like and subscribe. Thanks very much, guys. See you soon.